All right, today we're gonna to take a closer look at Emu Flight. We're gonna talk a little bit about the filtering. We're gonna talk about Emu Boost, Emu Limit, and Feathered Pids versus Normal Pids. The first thing we have to hit on is the IMUF filter is not working in the current beta release. It never was. What the fuck? You know, it was a beta release, a little goof in the code. So when you're using Emu Flight in the past or until the new release comes out, it's really just beta flight with a fixed low pass filter at 90 hertz and a D-term low pass filter cascaded 65 hertz and 200 hertz. And then whether you have the dynamic notch on or not. The dynamic notch code that it's using is Betaflight 3.5 dynamic notch code, uh, 4.0 and 4.1, uh, the dynamic notch code was improved. So if you've been using Emu Flight or giving some advice and talking about different Q factors and W factors, it didn't mean anything. It wasn't calling that code at any point in time. If you thought it flew smoother uh, than Betaflight for some reason, it was just these filter settings. Uh, so you could plot those same things into Betaflight and you'd get the same result. This is a test flight, uh, Betaflight 4.1. Same quad, it was a whoop style quad, brushless, Mobula 7. On this side, we have the raw noise and then the D-term filtered noise. The settings here for Betaflight are the same as we're in Emu Flight. So it was 90 Hertz static. I actually had 100 Hertz entered and then 200 Hertz. And I did that for both the Betaflight flight test and the Emu Flight flight test. So it was same filter setup, same PIDs, same RC smoothing, same everything. So you can see the raw noise here. You compare that with the raw noise there. It's not exactly the same, but it's fairly close. And then you can see the D-term filtered noise here and D-term filtered noise here. If anybody wants the logs, they can check it. This thing about the IMUF filter not working in the current beta release, that's not a controversial thing. Uh, the devs have known about it for a couple weeks now. So that's the biggest thing. Now they are working on a, another beta release coming up probably next week or the week after, who knows, probably next week that uh, supposedly has the IMUF working. So hopefully it does. I do kind of have to think it's funny for some of the YouTube videos you get out there and people are like, oh, look at this. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it's just the same, same thing. So yeah, I don't know. Once the IMUF is updated and working and I can test it out and uh, see, well then we'll come back to this. The next thing to talk about is this feathered PIDs versus non-feathered PID. What's, what's the difference? So on the left here, we have the normal PIDs in Emu flight. Now that's not the same thing as what's in beta flight. Actually, beta flight has what we show over here, which is the, the feathered pids in emu flight. So the normal pids in emu flight is essentially uh, D term based on error. So if you recall back when beta flight uh, 3.4 and earlier had the D set point weight slider, and if you put it to zero, it was the D term based on measurement. And if you put it to one, it was the D term based on error. The difference between the two is, is this, they call it the D-term kick. So when D-term is based on error, which would be the set point weight set to one back in beta flight 3.4 and earlier, when you go in to enter a stick move, the D-term would kind of relax or kick you into the move with the P-term as well. It was basically the feed forward of the time. You could kind of adjust it from there. And then if you go above one, if you're like you're at two, well, it was error times two. So in EMU flight, that's what this is, except it's a fixed value of just being based on error, just of one, you can't have it multiples of two or things like that, which was kind of the same as if you recall back in beta flight, I think it was 2.0, something like that. So that's what normal PIDs are. I believe the recommendation is you have to use normal PIDs when you're using feed forward. Uh, I haven't tested it both ways. I know when it was Butterflight and Helio, when you had buttered PIDs, and I think it's now called feathered PIDs, and you use feed forward, there was some jitter in the signal and some issues there. So I'm assuming that's why the recommendation is you have to use normal PIDs with feed forward and EMU flight. And uh, this is kind of the issue with that approach, as you can see this D term spiking, that's from the RX signal here and it's kind of jerkiness. So that's why Betaflight kind of went towards the feed forward to simplify it a little bit, but now that's an option again in Emu Flight. I believe they're keeping that on. I think they're gonna add like a slider again. So that will be that will be nice. And then hopefully with that address the feed forward thing. So then you'd have you could have D-term kick with feed forward if you wanted to plus play with that. Feathered PIDs is basically the same PID controller that's in beta flight. It's D-term always based on measurement. And it's a little simplified that in that case, D-term always fights any gyro movement and it's just fixed that way. And then if you want to kick the quad into a move, you use feed forward and uh, that's how it works. I believe you can use emu boost in either of these. And I would 
guess, and I can't confirm this for sure, you can check down in the comments, I'm sure Kevin or one of the devs would chime in, that Emu Boost may also work in angle mode, uh, which would be a little different. Uh, Betaflight obviously doesn't have Emu Boost, you just have feed forward. One of the downsides in Betaflight 4.1 is you don't have feed forward in angle mode. So there's no boosting in angle mode uh, currently in Betaflight. Actually, um, somebody's looking at that there might be in 4.2 but currently there's not any boosting way when you have angle mode flipped on for that's like for whoops and things of that nature next up emu boost so you have the emu boost and the emu boost limit obviously at zero it doesn't boost anything the max limit for emu boost is a thousand the max for emu boost limit is 250 so there's no debug mode for emu boost so we're going to go right into the code and take a look at it the first thing it does is it gets the set point minus the gyro to get this error rate uh, basically, emu boost is taking that, so that's the pit error. You know, the difference between where your set point is, where your sticks are, or the gyro is actually at that delta, that difference between the two. That's what it's trying to always close. That's what the pit loop's doing. That's the error rate that they're calling it here in this variable. Then it's taking that and it's squaring it. So it's error rate times error rate, which is really just error rate squared. You multiply in code, you multiply stuff by itself. You don't do squares, it takes longer. Uh, in the calculations. And then it's multiplying that by this error multiplier. The error multiplier is the emu boost factor divided by 1,000, um, and then multiplying that whole thing by 0 0.003. So essentially, as you move the sticks out farther, it's squaring that and then multiplying it by some factor, your emu boost factor. And it's taking that and doing some limiting down here. This is the emu limit. Ultimately, it's going to take the boosted error rate. Looks like it's going to mix that into some I-term calculations. So then this is the main thing down here. It's going to define the P-push here, which is normally your P-gains, which is this, times your pit error. But it's going to actually now mix that in where it's going to multiply that by the boosted pit error plus the normal pit error. So essentially, as you have more pit error, uh, when you're moving the sticks away or you have a bigger gap between the set point and the gyro, it's going to boost that even more than normal. It's almost like as that error grows, it's going to basically dynamically increase your P gains for you. And as the error shrinks, then that would come back down to your normal P gains. So really just think of it as like P gain boost. It boosts the P gains based on how big the error is, how far your gyro is away from tracking the set point. So on the left here, we have just the standard PID controller, no feed forward, no emu boost, and anything like that. And this is the inherent downside of just the normal PID controller. Without some sort of fourth term to boost it for stick moves, either you know a, a D term kick, feed forward, or you know emu boost in this case, you are just never going to track the set point in sharp stick moves because it has to generate pit error and p is proportional to the pit error so it's always going to start off small here and then kind of grow and then get the quad movement it's going to be a very soft feel and if you want the soft feel that's what you want just don't use feed forward don't need to use emo boost and you'll get have the standard pit controller feel which will be soft you also not be tracking set point very well for example this is 23 milliseconds of gap in here and for example 23 milliseconds at 15 miles an hour is half of a foot 30 miles an hour it's a foot 60 miles an hour it's two feet so your quad would have moved two feet at 60 miles an hour before it actually reached the rotation rate that you're commanding for it the next here is emu boost at its full limits and you can see here we still have some delay same quad everything and uh, we have some overshoot here now, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to address that overshoot. You know, if you have a higher D term to address the overshoot, that's going to throw off your P to D balance. So that's not really a good idea. So yeah, that's kind of a limitation of Emu Boost in its current state. Uh, if it was on, you know, say Betaflight uh, 4.1, you could use D min. You can use that as like a D boost configuration, and that would address this uh, this overshoot condition. I don't know that they're rebasing the code yet. I think that is in the plans to rebase on Betaflight 4.1 or 4.2 to whenever it gets there but uh, as of right now like I said this would be the result you get with the max now obviously if you would reduce these down to not have this overshoot condition obviously this gap would get bigger then as well this is emu flight with a feed forward of 250 no boost and it, then again normal pids so the normal pids this is kind of a combination of the two it's feed forward at 250 plus the d-term kick we're getting with this and you can see there's a, a big overshoot here 
Again, in the current condition of EMU flight, there's no way to really address that overshoot other than just reducing all these limits back. And then, of course, you can get back to this condition where you really don't have an overshoot, but then you have this larger gap here. And as I mentioned before, there is ways to address the overshoot conditions. So this is a, just the same quad, everything. This is beta flight 4.1 with feed forward at 250, just like these. And it also has the D-term boosting up by 10 gains uh, during sharp moves. So that uh, addresses the overshoot. Uh, there's a lot less overshoot in, in 4.1 uh, feed forward in general, and but it still needs just a little bit of boost of the D-gains to, to address any little overshooting up here at the top. Other things in EMU flight that are different from beta flight, there's TPA, you can break out to TPA to attenuate based on the break point. You can do the P term, I term, and D term separately. So in beta flight, you can either do the, the P and D together or just the D term, but here you can break all three out and here you can see it actually boosts the I term after this brace point, it didn't, doesn't decrease it. So that's a neat little, I, I like that. That's kind of neat little bit of flexibility there. They also have I term decay, which is different than I term relax. I didn't get to look at this, but it I term relax locks the I term when you enter into a sharp move and it just doesn't let it grow or decrease at all during a sharp move, which is what we want that prevents the I term wind up. I term decay is a little different. It lets the I term boost, but then as, as the sticks are coming back to the center, it kind of softens the gain on the I gain so you don't have any I term induced bounce back. I haven't got to do log tests on that, so I'll have to get that next round. We'll wait till the new version of EMU Flight comes out and we'll to take a look at that. And then also hopefully the IMUF filter once it's actually working. Okay, so that is it. That is our quick look at EMU Flight and some a little bit more depth other than just taking it and flying it around and people talking about differences that may or may not be there. There is some definitely differences and new features in the code, but the whole IMUF and the filter scheme, essentially it's the same thing as Beta Flight 3.5 for now. We'll see what it becomes in the new release uh, coming up for the next week or so and go from there. Thanks everybody. I hope this helped.